So how is this, the Tibetan craniology, um, different from normal? From sacral craniology, okay. This is the question. I wonder it was Yes, there. this is the question that everyone asks us. And because sacral cranial work, it, the normal cranial work, we'll start with the similarities. Mm -hmm. The similarities between the two is that we're working on the head. And then there's, a, then there's the difference. The Tibetan cranial work is done in prayer or mantra. Mm -hmm. Sacral cranial is not. Um, Tibetan cranial is done with pulse diagnosis. Sacral cranial is not. Um, sacral cranial maybe I'm going to be really generous by saying that it's 60 years. Generous. That's a generous. The man who, who brought it out only has been, was, was only 100 years since he was born. I mean, so let's say 60 years. This is 3,000 years. In 3,000 years, they've taken out all the glitches. This is egoless work. This is the, the hardest thing about this work is, is staying focused on not allowing the ego to come in. I don't know about sacral cranial and whether the ego comes in, but I know with the Tibetan, it's not. We're constantly taking their pulses. Every five, six, ten movements, we're coming back to see what's changed. And the pulses tell us what movement to make, not some pre-designed. This work is not formulated. It's an oral tradition. There's nothing written about it, which means that we can't demote the person to less than what they already are. You know, we don't have a formula. You never do the same person twice, nor the same thing twice for that person because they're changed. By the time they've had one session, by the time the next session happens, they're different, they've transformed. And the work works on many levels, not only physical, spiritual, but definitely emotional. It rebalances internal organs. It works on the fluid side of the body. We are mostly water. And you're working on the first system of the body. The first system of the body is the spinal column, right? The brain and the spine, aren't they the first things that we are? And that's what system we're working with. We're working with fluidness. <coughs> so we're seeing a person in their fluid energy. The other thing about the work is you get really high, incredibly high, incredibly high. Your senses get heightened. I had an accident. Um, I was in Europe and I had an accident. My husband dropped a 50-pound suitcase on my head. We're in a train, the train's not moving, he drops a suitcase on my head. I had, I had to actually wear my hair differently because I had, my side of my head was sticking out so far. Luckily, I was meeting up with some of my apprentices and they worked on me a little bit, just enough to kind of get me somewhat together. But Heidi worked on me when I came back and Heidi's working on me, and I'm, I get up from the table, and I'm going, is that new? Is that new? And I am loaded. I am so high. She's going, you are blazing. <laughs> and I was. I was just as high as could possibly be because I was back to, my, to myself again, to my own frequency. And when you meet your own frequency, you get incredibly high. When you've been in, into it with someone who sees God in you, your body just flies. So I know from experience uh, how that feels. So traditionally the work is done on a hard surface, a board. It's done on wood. We don't work on metal and we don't work on soft surfaces. We, if the person needs no support. This does not make most people really happy, but it doesn't feel, after you're on it, you can't really tell that you're on a hard surface. Cerebral spinal fluid does increase during the time that we work. Mm -hmm. They get more cerebral spinal fluid, and that's, I think, where they get that incredible euphoria. It is quite amazing. I mean, anyone who's an apprentice or a practitioner in this room will tell you, they're all like, they're, they go back to that, like almost a flashback. Oh yes, we know what that feels like. Other unique thing about this work is that we seal it. When the person's already come to their place of balance, then we put it, we do a seal, and that seal needs to remain for anywhere between five to seven minutes. We tend to try to stretch it to seven to ten minutes sometimes. 
but the seal actually lets those um, plates find that harmony. And sometimes this few minutes of resting is more profound even than the work itself. Traditionally it's done five to seven consecutive days. Mm -hmm. Traditionally. Uh, but in, in our society, people come in a little different pace. Some people they need th three times and they're going to see it one, some people one time. Some people, some people years. Mm -hmm. I have some, my autistic children that I'm working with, and we have a lot of autistic children. They're all functional. They're all in regular school. But they've been coming for years. Mm -hmm. I have one little boy I've been seeing since he was five. He's 11 now. Long time. But to have him be able to talk to you and hug you and touch you, mm -hmm. it's worth 11. You know, if it takes us 20 years, we'll keep going.